Hi, my name is Brett Hoffman, and in this tutorial video, I'm just going to very quickly go over a lot of the basics and what you need to know to be able to start creating your own rooms and levels inside Celeste using the Ahorn level editor, a fan-made level editor, of course, for Celeste. Before anything else, of course, I would highly recommend having both this level editor and the Everest modding platform, so that way you are able to constantly update and test your levels in-game simply by saving them. But for the sake of keeping this to as short as possible, I am not going to go over how, how to test that in this video. I am just going to go over the basics of being able to set down tiles for the player to be able to run on and see in the background as well as how to set down player spawns and move between rooms. So we are going to start by creating a new map. This is going to be a brand new level full of rooms as soon as you make them. But for every new map I would recommend not having a package name here in the create map menu. As soon as you click create map, you're going to be brought to this screen with nothing on it. And to be able to start actually working, we are going to have to add rooms. This very first room, uh, we're just going to call room one. Uh, we don't need to worry about the color at all. Not right now. We will need to worry about the X and Y, but for now we're going to keep those to zero. And for the width and the height, these are mostly at your dis discretion. For the average player level, a, and by that I mean like a room the player is supposed to be able to walk and platform in, the minimum recommended is this 40 by 23 setup they have preset. Because this is the size of the average screen length. These one room puzzles, that do not have the camera moving at all are 40 by 23 rooms. We don't need to worry about anything regarding camera offsets, wind pattern, or any of these right now, but these are fun to use uh, as soon as you get a little bit more used to them. These are how you can make it so that way if rooms are dark, such as the ones in level 5. You can make the room underwater. You can give it low gravity, such as in chapter seven and nine. The only thing that I would recommend also putting a little bit of time into right now when you're just learning the editor is I would look through the music. All of this is music directly from Celeste, including the B-side remixes, as well as stuff from the Farewell DLC. I would simply try and pick something that you can listen to a lot when just setting up and trying to test these rooms because you're going to hear it a lot through the repetitive nature of trying to create these Celeste levels. So I'm just going to keep it to the level one music, which is music underscore city, and we're going to add the room. Now here we have a very very simple gray box to work with, not very large. We can go ahead and use our brush tool to be able to place down blocks in both the foreground and the background. So obviously the background is a purely aesthetic uh, aspect of the level editor. Meanwhile, the foreground tiles, this is what the player is going to be running around and platforming off of. Uh, for the sake of making large changes all at once, we have the bucket tool, which can be used to completely fill in or remove a lot of tiles at once. We have the circle tool, which you can just go ahead and drag out and get a lot of tiles covered at once. We have ellipses, which is similar to the circle tool, but you are allowed to make it as wide or as thin as you want. And lastly, we have the lines, which can go at a diagonal, and rectangles, which 
will just fill in any sort of box that you tell it to. All of these tools are perfect for trying to set up a level your first time. Uh, buckets are extremely useful for the background tiles specifically, especially if you're trying to make an indoor place such as the inside of a house we would have here. Note the wood flooring and the wood wall behind it. It's pretty clear that the player would be in some sort of wood building if we were to place them in here. And moving right along into actually placing them in here, we need to talk about the player spawn point entity. Underneath placement, this is where you're going to find all of the entities and triggers, as well as all of the foreground and background decorations. So if I wanted to be able to put like a ruined sign here on the level, I would be able to. This is this is just where all of the decals are. I will go into that more eventually. But for just now, we just want to focus on the player spawn point because this is the most important entity that you will ever use. So much so that I would even recommend uh, double clicking it here in the editor. You'll see it has an asterisk next to it right now. If I went down to say the battle and boost, which is just the little bubble that shows up in chapter seven, double clicking that is what makes it highlighted and it will automatically bring it to the top of the material list above everything else so it's easy to find. Please, 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 for the sake of making things simple on yourself, I would highly recommend always keeping the player spawn point as a highlighted entity. Now then, just looking at our level right now, there's not very much for us to do. But the important part is that the player can spawn and they can move around because we have a spawn point and because we have a floor for them to walk on. But as soon as we want to start adding new rooms, this is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. Not by much, but the thing about creating new rooms is that you'll always have to come up with the room names manually. Obviously, it won't just automatically just let you put down a room to without telling you, that you telling it that you want a room to. And you are also going to have to carefully do the math to try and place rooms directly next to each other. Celeste does a lot of clever things in the game itself to make it seem like there are ways to transition between screens that are not directly next to each other. But the one rule about Celeste as far as moving between rooms is that both rooms have to be connected to one another in some some blocks at least for the player to be able to pass there. So this little connection wall would allow us to go into this screen and there needs to be a player spawn point in this screen too. Otherwise we cannot enter it. So if we just wanna go ahead and create another wood background and we can go ahead and go to our foreground tiles so that way we have a place to stand. You can go and save this, and let's go and call it level 02. It's not terribly important that we place it. Now that we have these two rooms set up so that way there is a player spawn point in both, and they are touching one another, we can open up Celeste with the Everest modding platform on it, spawn in at this spawn point, and we would be able to walk over to this screen. And of course, since it is the bottom of the screen, this little pit would actually kill us because we are not allowed to transition down unless there is a room beneath us. There are a lot of little nuanced things you can do to make these transitions a lot cleaner and make it so that way you're not always working on one solid plane going forward since if you've played Celeste you would obviously know that this is not how Celeste actually plays at all. 
as far as the flow between screens. But this is a good way to get started on actually creating levels with challenges in them. Being able to have these small screens with, say, little challenges for the player to be able to get through to move to the next one. It's also very easy to experiment on single screens or small chunks of screens if you want to be able to try out different entities, like we can put a spring here, or some like jump through platforms over this pit. There's just, there's a lot to go through for this level editor. And what I've shown here today are just the very basic things to be able to start making your levels. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope this helps you in creating some of the best Celeste levels ever, ever made. Who knows? Anyway, that is all, and I thank you for your time.